the PSA is a blood test for whether you have an active cancer or not. The treatment for less advanced cases when the disease is confined to the prostate gland <clears throat> is, is often a surgery or a form of radiation surgery. But in cases like mine where it's spread beyond the prostate, it's, it's effectively inoperable. You can't cure it with surgery. So the treatment is, is hormone therapy, which is a, a, a euphemism for castration, chemical castration, and radiotherapy. It's potentially curable, which at my age means I die from something else. Uh, or even worse, I dement first. But by my age, I really have no right to complain. And I, I hope that it doesn't sound like a complaint. It's supposed to be more a, a meditation mm. on the, my absurd inability to be completely calm about the prospect of dying. Yeah. And what did you find most difficult about going from the role of doctor to the role of patient? I think the main lesson was that how panic-struck and how frightened I was mm. when the diagnosis was first made. It took a lot of coming to terms with. Also, to begin with, I didn't know if I actually had <clears throat> metastatic disease or not. And it was slightly ironical in my case because prostate cancer typically spreads to the bones, typically to the spine, where it causes progressive paralysis. And I must have operated upon not dozens, but hundreds of old men with prostate cancer, which is causing paralysis. So I have no illusions about what might await me, mm. which is why there's one chapter devoted to the question of assisted dying, which I've been campaigning for as vociferously as possible for, for some years now. Why is it that you think that assisted dying should be legalised? For the simple reason that it's available in many countries and the evidence is quite clear it is not leading to abuse. The argument against it by a vociferous minority in this country is it will be abused, it will be a slippery slope to killing off old people, vulnerable people. It doesn't happen. You have legal safeguards. And as it is, it's only a very small number of people who want to go down that route. But the fact that there's probably hundreds of people are going to Dignitas in Switzerland um, shows there's certainly a, a demand for it in some quarters. And it seems to me a fundamental human right. The law in this country says that we are allowed to refuse treatment. You, you, I, I'm allowed to say I do not want any further treatment, even though, I know it means I, <clears throat> even though I know it means that I will die. But I'm not allowed to say when or where or how, which is wildly inconsistent and is humane. I mean, all, all assisted dying is, a, a, is about is trying to allow people to die with dignity, peacefully, probably at home, which again, in fact, is the aim of palliative care as a whole. Yeah. Has your um, emotional attachment to this becoming law changed after your diagnosis? No, I felt very strongly about this beforehand. As a doctor, I, you know, even with very good palliative care, dying can be a very unpleasant experience, both in the sense of a loss of autonomy and dignity which might well face me if I become paralysed, which is quite probable, from the prostate cancer. I do not want to have a prolonged, dragged-out, miserable life in bed, doubly incontinent and paralysed. When I know the only end is death, I would rather get it over and done with. Or at least the man I am now, I want that choice. I may decide I'll cling on and I'm happy to be in some hospice somewhere paralysed in W and continent. Um, but at least I think in principle I'd like the choice I can choose how to end my life.